Hello, my name is Dr. Shambles, and today we are be looking at my OP07 decklist stack breakdown that I'm using, not using, for uh, Blue Yellow Ace. So, first of all, I'm just gonna break down the whole deck, but then I have some things to say. This is more for people that are subscribed to me, uh, and overall, that just follow the channel. But, for now, let's just start with breaking down my deck. So, Right now, my deck uh, revolves around uh, the strategy of straight up just being aggro onto lives using my leader ability and the kids version of the of the brothers to put myself at 7k, swing into lives, making him uh, making 9k lives, uh, 9k swings actually instead of 7k, uh, making your opponent straight out just block or take the life. And once you start reaching late game, we straight up just drop one pudding, resetting all of those uh, lives that he took to hand for free for us, and therefore helping us finish in game. Uh, to help us get value out of our uh, leader ability, uh, even when we whiff some of the bigger brothers, I use Viola, Flampe, for in case I whiff. So what I mean is if I put a 5 cost character like Satori onto the top of life and uh, he can, obviously I cannot use the small brothers to put them on the field and then just kind of just replace Satori for them you know. Uh, so pretty much we have Viola which would uh, place the, the life face down uh, and uh, Flampe, which I would play Flampe, at Satori to hand, so I would get the 2k back to hand, and then I would draw an additional uh, card. If you have Yori, which I'm gonna put it right here, this one right here, obviously this is all alt arts. Uh, straight up just do it, she's much better than uh, Flampe. Uh, Flampe is the budget option and the one that I'm using. But uh, the the Hiyori is just straight up just better at making combos. So for example, with Flampe you add your 2k back and then you draw an additional card. Which helps you a lot by the way because your whole strategy is that you you just add a bunch of cards to hand. Which is why I'm playing Sanchez Pilaf. But keeping with the Hiyori combo, Hiyori you would play by an additional cost. You know, she's not a 1 cost, she's a 2 cost. But you would add Satori to the hand and then you could put either one of the uh, big brothers onto the top of your life and then if you have the dawn play the um, play the kids version to then make yourself a 7k for the next turn or you can just straight up put the Sanji spill off which in my opinion is the best combo you have with Hiyori where you instead take away the Satori and then replace it with the Sanji spill off and once your opponent swings onto your lives your Sanji spill off will get its trigger making you playing it for free so that's why I think it's very nice to have Yori instead of Flampe, but Flampe works just as well. Uh, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Monkey Digar being our searcher. Sanchez Pilaf again we are playing for because our whole strategy revolves around us being at 7k leader. And then only needing to uh, discard a counter or a card from time to time. And so this will make us have a lot of um, a lot of cards in hand, and Sanjay Bilaf just straight out helps us um, helps us get more cards in hand. Then we have the new blocker Ace, which in turn will draw us two, but then we we can put two cards on the bottom or top of our deck. This will mean we can just straight out start um, drawing with Sanjay Bilaf and Flampe, uh, and then we could potentially in later turns. Just play a Portuguese the Ace, draw two cards, see uh, the small key, small brothers versions, and then from our entire hand, which is going to be very big, we can just straight out put one of the big versions of the brothers, which could be another version of the blocker, onto the top of the deck, and then activate our leader effect, which will not whiff because we pretty much manipulated our top deck. So that will help us a lot. The only problem with this deck is no board removal besides the Raging Tiger. In future sets, OP08, which I will be showing you a deck list by the way, just for you to get a little taste. And if you saw, um, if you saw my early video of the day, I am showcasing the deck. Although I played like shit, but this is me recording in another uh, day. 
Um, so I'm just gonna show you the updated version just for you to get a taste. This is for newer players who are thinking on investing this on this deck right on OPO7 to see what, what is coming in OPO8, which I think is a motivation to actually do this deck. This deck is really good. The skill ceiling is very big and people think this deck is super linear. It feels like it, but it's not. <laughs> so yeah, so we only have the Raging Tiger as our removal. Um, I was playing the Red Rock, this one which pretty much just lets us take away anything. Red Rock is better for late game uh, decks uh, that rely on having big bodies on late game. Uh, Raging Tiger is straight up just to remove all of the, um, of the 6 cost or less, so this will help you take away 2 blockers which will help you uh, take away uh, games, so just to go for lethal. Uh, or just take away pressure that the smaller pressure that was built up on mid uh, mid to late game. Uh, this is because your pretty much the strategy is very feels very linear because most of the time you're just straight up ignoring your opponent's board and just swinging for their lives. Uh, and then your opponent can build as much board as they want because they really can just wait till you're back at 5k, which if you whiff will come sooner. Or when you just run out of gas, which is when you start running out of the kids version and don't have any more in your hand. They're just going to use their board to swing into you and probably after that you're going to start uh, discarding a lot of counter. So once you whiff once, it starts going downhill. Uh, if you whiff once, you, you're going to discard a lot of cards, just saying. And then even if you get yourself back into 7k, you are not going to have as much resources in hand to protect yourself. So that's the only problem with the deck, um, and to help us with that, we could potentially uh, just remove one one pudding and play another Raging Tiger just to have uh, one more card for removal. The reason I'm playing uh, four puddings is because our cycle in the deck is not as strong as it's going to be in Opio Weight. So for now, we really want to see if, uh, the pudding on our hand. If we get extra uh, copies onto our hand, we're only using one card, by the way, one pudding once, just like I said, uh, when you're alone late game to reset their hand. Uh, you can use two if you're going against a deck that's two based on late game, or if you're going against an NL that's just straight up uh, likes to add cards into your hand. Another thing with pudding is if you're... Uh, playing against a blue color deck on the other side, your whole strategy revolves around you having a really big hand size, so watch out for this card as well. Uh, everybody's taking this card. Nobody talks about her for some reason, but she's like one of, one of the most, like one of the best blue cards out there, and to be honest, one of my favorites right after Sanji's Pilaf. So, yeah, now I'm just going to show you guys what is my uh, OPO8 version. Just so you get a taste, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but here it is. This is my uh, version of the OPO8. Now, this has just extreme top deck manipulation with the new search event, with the new uh, Namule blocker, which is pretty much your blocker ace just played uh, with less cost and has worse stat line. We have ulti, also <laughs> also manipulates top, top deck. Uh, we still have Sanji's Pilaf and we have Flampe. We don't need Viola. With this version, you straight up don't whiff. I'm telling you right now, the problem with this deck, I noticed uh, by rewatching my my video of the day uh, that you guys probably should go see. <laughs> um, you don't whiff. The thing is, you don't whiff so much that you straight out just run out of kids to play. And so you have like, what, eight, seven to eight turns straight at being a 7k and then just starts going downhill uh so yeah this is why we actually are going down on one ace and one of the older luffy uh having the blocker ace at four is straight up uh to get the most consistency so we are not decreasing the ratios on that and not on this luffy because it's somewhat of a removal card so yeah but the rest we did decrease one this is just because we are going to run out of kits, so we don't need that many <laughs> that many big versions of the brothers. But the rest you guys can see, we pretty much just manipulate the top deck so much that we don't whiff and then we just start getting cards at hand. I'm gonna say the same thing, uh, just straight out, uh, remove Flampe for Iori if you have one, so be away. So thanks so much for watching, 
consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video. I always appreciate when you guys stay till the end of the video. And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.